So this week on Freedom Fanatics, we'll be discussing Pure, an act which threatens freedom in South Africa. We will also be looking at three critical race hustling lies told about the Constitution. And finally, look at our quote of the week by John Cain Berman. So stay tuned, it's going to be a great show. Welcome to Freedom Fanatics, a production of the Freedom Advocacy Network. This show is every Tuesday at 6 p.m. on YouTube and Facebook. Each week we discuss the latest fan content with authors and creators right here. My name is Sharon Boysen and today I'm joined by Herman Pretorius, who is the director of FAN, and a first-time guest, Martin van Staden, who is a policy consultant at the Free, the free Market Foundation and Saka Lege, and he's currently doing his doctorate in law. And Martin has also written a book um, in 2019, which is now titled The Constitution and the Rule of Law, An Introduction. Thanks for being on the show today. And Martin, I hope this is going to be the first of many. Uh, so right now we're we'll watching our latest explainer video, which fan releases every Monday. And this ex this week's explainer video is titled Papuda, Breaking Freedom to Achieve Broken Outcomes. Let's have a quick watch. Equality before the law, where the law treats everyone the same, no matter who they are. Equality of opportunity, where everyone gets a fair chance to build the life they choose to work for. Equality of outcomes, an impossible goal because people are too different in their interests, experiences, and skills to have the same qualifications, incomes, and savings. Papuda, the Promotion of Equality and Prevention of Unfair Discrimination Act, was adopted two decades ago to help bar unfair discrimination. It went wrong in also trying to promote equality of outcomes though these damaging clauses were never brought into effect. Now Papuda is being changed in keeping with the toxic and radical ideas like critical race theory, CRT, to put even more emphasis on equality of outcomes. Papuda is mutating to demand, for example, equal outcomes between the poor and the better off. But this will simply bankrupt many businesses rather than increase the growth and jobs that people need to get ahead. Some clauses in the new mutated Papuda will also make any form of discrimination illegal, even if it is not intended and it is not unfair. This difference between fair and unfair is important. Examples of discrimination that are not unfair. A place of worship, only granting membership to people who hold a particular faith. Younger car owners, paying more for their car insurance than older, more experienced ones. The new mutated Papuda will make even such practices illegal. It also gives the government enormous powers in its pursuit of the equality of outcomes that just cannot be attained. Equality before the law is a key pillar of our constitution. Equality of opportunity is vital too. But a government trying to enforce equality of outcomes will bankrupt businesses and destroy the freedom our constitution is supposed to guarantee. Against this, all freedom-loving South Africans must take a stand. Yeah. Your freedom is worth fighting for. Join FAN today to build a new tomorrow. Cool. So we just watched our latest explainer video, which focuses on Papuda. Adam, can you just give us an outline of some of Papuda's objectives? Uh, yes. I, I mean, it, it really is quite self-explanatory in the in the very uh, lengthy and stumbling title. It is uh, to you know promote equality and to uh, move against unfair discrimination. And those objectives, I think, are fair objectives um, for, for a state to pursue. But I do think that one can, one can almost look at legislation as offensive legislation or defensive legislation. Um, in the sense that defensive legislation takes a stance against inappropriate or unwanted behavior without prescribing exactly 
the types and categories of behavior that is acceptable in the sense that it identifies a, a sort of a small segment of possible behavior in a society and it puts in place certain censure uh, steps or consequences for inappropriate behavior. That's often a defensive in the sense that it protects the freedom to behave as you wish while making sure that behavior that threatens the basic freedoms of a society remain, you know, uh, uh, guarded, difficult, um, and, and perhaps costly for people who want to engage with them. But then you've got offensive legislation, which you, want, you can always consider to be just social engineering, where it's no longer identifying a small segment of possible behaviors that you wish to discourage, but that you actually start prescribing general behavior which you want to encourage. And the, the, the toxicity of Bepuda that is, is that it is now fully transitioning from being defensive to being offensive, from being something of offense that guards the liberty of ordinary citizens and within the sphere seeks to promote equality and go against unfair discrimination to something where you start actually, where the government, the state starts saying, you know, behave in way A, B or C or else. So when it comes to the objectives, um, I think we a few months ago, a few weeks ago, we had a great Milton Friedman quote um, in, in one of our explainer videos where he essentially said the greatest sin you can commit, it's paraphrased of course, is judging policies and things by their intentions rather than by their outcomes. Um, so if we look at the outcomes, you see one thing. If you look at the intentions, you might see something that sounds good to the ordinary folk. But yeah, that's the difference of, of that, that we should uh, have in mind here, especially with these changes mutating Peputa into something rather toxic. Yeah, a uh, concerning point about Peputa that is, that's actually raised in the explainer video is that it will make discrimination illegal, whether intentional or unintentional. Can you maybe just take us through that process, Martin? Mm, yeah, no. <clears throat> so, I mean, uh, the word discrimination has in its essence, in its nature, the uh, uh, the aspect of intentionality. Uh, you, if, if you bump your toe against a couch, you did not discriminate against the floor in favor of the couch. You cannot accidentally discriminate against anything or against anyone because yeah. discrimination is inherently a choice between competing alternatives. Uh, now, Professor Pierre de Foss and people like him uh, would uh, would say that no, but our courts have always recognized un uh, so-called unintentional discrimination, and therefore nothing is really changing. I mean, that that's really a, a load of nonsense. And it, to the extent that our courts have recognized it as such, they have made a huge, huge mistake. Uh, that is totally incompatible with a, a legal system based on logic and and, and reasonableness. Uh, so, what the government is doing here is essentially uh, uh, totalizing, uh, in, in in the totalitarian sense of the word, its its ideology, its its national democratic revolution, its transformationism uh, uh, through this legislation. It is is it is totalizing uh, that ideology throughout society, as Herman says that it's it's social engineering. Uh, uh, and and the the most concerning part is the, where the the act says that uh, all persons in society, including civil society, NPOs like uh, FAN, like the IRR, uh, like the uh, Free Market Foundation, will now have to promote equality. And of course, as we've seen, it redefines equality. And now in the Constitution, equality is defined as uh, uh, equal uh, benefit and application of the law plus equal enjoyment of all rights and freedoms. That's the constitutional definition of equality. This mm -hmm. uh, legislation changes that entirely to say uh, there must be equal outcomes, there must be a, a so-called substantive equality, and essentially uh, you must everyone must be treated exactly alike uh, in the private sector. Now, that's not what the Constitution envisages at all the constitution sees unfair discrimination as Herman said uh, particularly as denying someone equal enjoyment of rights and freedoms not simply offending someone not making them feel bad or anything like that that's not what our constitution envisages so uh, even uh, uh, as Herman says there's a difference between the uh, intention and the uh, and the outcomes I think even the intention here is malicious I think it's quite clear that the government is is now uh, uh, committing itself to extreme social control 
Uh, and maybe it's going to water down the PUDA, uh, the amendment bill, before it adopts it. But we can now see what it plans for the future. Uh, and uh, like the opposition to the new gun bill, I think that society needs to come together and really, really say, no, <laughs> we're not going to uh, uh, have South Africa turn into an apartheid-esque or a Stalin, Stalinist uh, uh, hellhole of tyranny. We we want freedom in this country, even, even if freedom is sometimes... Uh, 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 inconvenient. Yeah, thanks for your insight on that. Um, so please don't, don't please don't forget to watch our explainer videos, which are released every Monday and can be found on all our social media platforms. And you can check out our Facebook page, Freedom Advocacy Network. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at Badger of Liberty. And don't forget to turn on our post notifications so you can receive our content the moment it gets released. And up next, we will be discussing um, an article which was written by Martin. And in it, he identifies three critical race hustling lies told about the constitution so martin in your introduction you don't really hold back eh? um you, you directly identify critical race hustlers as the political faction threatening south africa's constitution because they so dishonestly racialize the constitution who are these race hustlers you refer to and what are the three lies that they tell about our constitution yeah, thanks. So uh, there are broadly two camps, uh, and uh, both of them have been around since the 1980s. They're not new. Uh, essentially, there are the so-called transformative constitutionalists. Now, these are uh, a, a, a group of people who believe that the constitution is fundamentally a racial constitution. Uh, it envisages the racial transformation of South Africa, not, not in the sense of making the law apply equally between races. That's obviously something that's totally correct. But but they see the constitution as this tool of social engineering to bring about uh, racial uh, uh, equality of outcomes. And that is uh, definitely the, the first, uh, uh, I'll get to the second group, but that's the, that's the first uh, critical race hustling lie. And that is that the constitution requires or allows racial affirmative action. And what uh, the transformative constitutionalists uh, rely on is section nine of the constitution, the right to equality. And they say that that uh, uh, provision of the Constitution uh, brought about this uh, this cosmic uh, duty upon society, upon government, to bring it to uh, uh, racially engineer our society to have this uh, uh, equality of outcomes, and and that includes dictating to businesses. Uh, who may own those businesses. That includes dictating to, to uh, uh, employees the proportion of which uh, uh, of, of their racial group may be employed by a business. Uh, 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 when it comes to property rights, it dictates that to the exact proportion of your race's demographic percentage in the population, that is the percentage of property that you may own. And this is all apparently something that transformative constitutionalists find in the constitution, when of course the constitution is there to protect freedom. It is there to uh, define the, the scope of government uh, and, 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 and secure for ordinary South Africans and for firms and for civil society, uh, a great sphere of freedom. Uh, uh, and that, that the only place where the constitution Constitution uh, in any way, shape, or form recognizes a form of racial engineering is the demographics of the judiciary, the demographics of Chapter 9 commissions, like the Human Rights Commission, the Public Service Commission, and uh, in the public service, in government. That Those are the only three places where our Constitution says there must be demographic representativity, uh, and there is a rule of legal interpretation that uh, uh, if, the cons if the law mentions something but excludes something else, then that was intentional. Then you cannot interpret the something else as being included. And that is, uh, to me, quite a final... Uh, uh, answer to whether the constitution requires the demographic racial engineering of the private sector by business by by government and the answer is no it doesn't and i think it doesn't even allow it because non-racialism is a founding provision of the constitution and that must be respected now the second race hustling lie uh, which which uh, uh, does link a little bit with uh, the first one also taught by transformation uh, transformative constitutionalists is that the constitution seeks to transform every facet of South African society. And I, I briefly just mentioned that uh, Papuda is, is uh, one uh, part of this uh, idea that uh, there is this to totalitarian constitutionalism uh, whereby uh, government must engineer 
uh, uh, equality and uh, sometimes they include dignity uh, uh, in that in society and and basically deprive freedoms across the board uh, to to bring about the the values that the constitution apparently requires all South Africans to subscribe to. Now that is of course also incorrect. That is not what a constitution does. Uh, the moment you have a constitutional democracy, you exclude totalitarianism entirely. You give individuals, communities, the right to determine for themselves what values they have, uh, uh, what preferences they have. That is the essence of freedom, and freedom is what a constitutional instrument fundamentally protects. Uh, so there, there is no such thing as uh, the constitution requiring Space, so-called spatial inequalities in our cities to be uh, 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 eliminated by government. Uh, there is the, these things do not, or democracy to exist in corporate in, in big corporates uh, to worker participation in in the governance of a company. Uh, none of that uh, exists in the constitution. Those may be good ideas by themselves, but they are not required by the constitution. And now, finally, the last. Uh, there are many more <laughs> critical race hustling lies but the, the last one for our purpose is here um this is a, a different uh, group. I mentioned the transformative constitutionalists. Uh, the second group, you could call them the decolonial constitutionalists. Now, they are the enemies of liberals and freedom lovers like ourselves, just as much as they also regard transformative constitutionalists as their enemies. So these two groups don't like each other that much. Uh, the decolonial constitutionalists, uh, they're, they're a relatively recent uh, group of people. They believe that uh, the, the 1990s was a great betrayal of this struggle against apartheid. They believe that the, the constitution is a Western imposition uh, upon South Africa and that the ANC and Nelson Mandela sold out. They were strung along by the, the evil liberals uh, in the, the, Demo the Democratic Party and by the, the conservative racists in the National Party. And this constitution is now holding back uh, uh, transformation and holding back progress. Uh, uh, and in their view, the constitution is 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 uh, uh, borderline evil. Um, uh, this is obviously a lie. What they have in mind is they they are unhappy that we did not get a Stalinist constitution uh, at the end of apartheid. They are very upset that. Uh, the Soviet bloc fell in the 1990s. Uh, they wanted South Africa to be a socialist workers' republic. Uh, and, and these are mostly the EFF, the BLF uh, type people who are, are very sore about the victory of liberal democracy. Um, but unfortunately, they're gaining their ideas are gaining gaining a lot of traction uh, to the extent that critical race theory has been accepted by our courts. Uh, thankfully, no precedent yet, but there are a lot of obiter dicta, uh, which are remarks in passing by our judges in our highest court, even uh, talking about uh, systems of oppression that exist somewhere in the ether that are wasted upon the the vulnerable majority. Uh, uh, to the extent that that is gaining traction, we we have reason to be concerned because this the the, the decolonial constitutionalists uh, pose a far greater risk to freedom in South Africa than the the, the somewhat milk toast transformative constitutionalists. But uh, uh, what what I think it comes down to is that as liberals, as moderates. Uh, uh, we've kind of dropped the ball in engaging in this constitutional uh, discourse. Uh, the transformative constitutionalists and the decolonial de de constitutionalists, they, they monopolize the discourse. People like Pierre de Foss, Dennis Davis, uh, these are uh, our constitutional experts that everyone goes to to talk about the constitution. Both of them are transformative constitutionalists. Uh, uh, that needs to stop. We do need liberal constitutionalists or just plainly constitutionalists uh, uh, to stop start saying, listen, the way the constitution is interpreted uh, is totally wrong. It is incompatible with constitutionalism. It is incompatible with a free society uh, and uh, it needs to stop. So uh, yeah, these are the, the, the three main critical race hustling lies that I've identified, but I can get into a lot of more detail. There's a lot of myths about our highest law in this country. Yeah, thanks for that. Um, one thing I love about FAN and especially this podcast is that we aren't afraid to call them out especially with the dangerous ideas whenever they are out there threatening our freedom. 
And you can find all our written content on our website, freedomadvocacy.net, where we have amazing writers such as Herman and Martin always contributing to fan. And now we're going to move on to our quote of the week by John Ken Berman, who is a senior policy fellow at the South African Institute of Race Relations. And John says, um, the ANC seeks more and more power for the state, regardless of corruption and incompetence. I think John stands corrected when he states that the ANC are aiming to increase the power of the state, um, especially through policies such as Bermuda, Black Economic Empowerment, EWC, um, because these aren't meant to um, improve the lives of ordinary South Africans, but they are actually meant to increase the power of the state. Armand, do you have any final thoughts for us? Uh, I must say, I think I think uh, uh, John's quote there really just uh, finishes off this whole discussion that we've been having about uh, Papuda and about Martin's piece about the Constitution. Um, this might be a very American importation, but I think it is very, very important to note. A Constitution with any liberal democratic elements in it is by nature a limit on government power. And when you see a state acting against those limits, well, I think John's point is really affirmed. Yeah, thanks for that. And we've reached the end of this episode. So don't forget to catch us every Tuesday at 6 p.m. on YouTube and Facebook, as well as on IGTV. And to join fans, sign up at freedomadvocacy.net. And remember, guys, your freedom is worth fighting for.